everybody welcome back to my channel I am Meg and if you're new here welcome so today I am giving this antique dresser a makeover it is quite an old vintage piece but great and st structurally made and in great condition so I got this piece out of my unit and I managed to get both of these dressers into my van and back home to my workshop Here's a closer look at the dresser. I love these handles. They are beautiful. I had not decided yet if I was going to keep them or not, but you will soon see at the very end. This piece is well made and looks so pretty. So the first thing I do is always take off the hardware. That way I don't paint over it and then it gets all gucky. Or if the new owner who buys the piece takes off the hardware and wants to replace it, but there's no paint underneath that would look really odd and so I always take off the hardware on either side of this dresser at the top were these wood appliques they were really tiny but one of them was broken in half and I just didn't want to start making molds and fixing it because I just found that it was really really small and it just wasn't worth the time to do it so I took them off and it was pretty easy they were just glued on and they were very very tiny like I said so they were easy to take off I then sanded the drawers I was starting to get an idea of what I wanted to do to this dresser and so I had noticed that underneath this top wood that I'm sanding was more of a reddish pink mahogany tone and that it was wood veneer on top, which I really didn't like. But as I was sanding through, and you can see in that very top corner there, there is lighter wood underneath, which I was really, really happy about. And so I started to sand more of it off and realized that it's a beautiful wood grain underneath and it's the exact tone of wood that I want. You can see right here, I've sanded through the wood veneer on top and there is that beautiful color of wood that I want. So I did this with all of the drawers, but I was finding that it was taking me a really long time with the orbital sander so I decided to get out my belt sander. This is my belt sander and it is perfect for things like this. Now, because these are drawers, the belt sander is very powerful. Some are more powerful than others, but usually they are powerful. And as you can see right there, one, I'm wearing sandals with uh, no socks and <laughs> I should be wearing shoes and I ended up changing my shoes right after that. So I asked Mr. Lovely to come along and help me because he could hold the drawer more steadily, steadily, <laughs> and then use the belt sander. So this is how they turned out because every time I tried to do it, it the drawer would just flip and that was not fun. So here, what I was showing is that I, what I did is I just used the orbital sander just to sand off of the previous stain. That way your belt sander won't get all gunked up and gooey from the previous stain and it'll just take off that, that wood veneer. So it's perfect for that. And I've used it on a huge dining room table and it worked out amazing as long as you've got another wood layer underneath. So I don't usually roll on my primer or paint if you've watched all of my other videos you notice that I use a paint sprayer but because I'm only painting a very small area of this dresser I thought I would try to use the roller and I didn't like it at first because I found that it just looked messy but I realized that's the first coat it always does look messy so I continued to roll on about two to three coats of the primer and I used a little brush just to do touch-ups in the corners where the roller couldn't reach. Mm -hmm. 
so here I am I've done the top and so now I'm just gonna do the sides and then I'm also gonna do the front trim there and in between each drawer on those that trim as well and you can see here it's kind of hard I found it hard to get into those corners and that's where I used the little brush to to fill in those areas where the roller really couldn't touch unless I I went really close to it which I, I did in some areas but at first I hated the rolling so much I kept saying I want to go and spray um, but I kept going and once I had done the first coat I was really happy with it So the transfer that I'm using is called French Ceramics and it has um, flowers and roses on it and I thought wouldn't it be cool if I could make some molds to go with it and put on the dresser and you'll see for the reveal that I didn't actually use the molds. I did make quite a lot um, but with any art or creation and furniture refinishing sometimes you end up changing your mind and you just don't do what you thought you were going to do and what you had planned out so I made the molds and I actually put them aside because I'm going to use them on a mirror I have another video where I painted a mirror and then I put molds all around the mirror um, four corners or two corners and it looked so pretty it sold right away for a girl who um, bought it for her wedding and I thought well I could use these molds for other mirrors that I have if you want to check out that video I'll just put the link up here and you can watch that and see what you think I think it turned out really well and so that's what I'm going to use the molds for I also show in that video also how to make it and as you saw here I mixed the two solutions from the amazing casting resin box and you make sure you have equal parts mix it really well with a stir stick so that it's not cloudy and then you can pour into your mold these molds are from redesign with Prima I will put the link in my description and they have so many different molds so many different designs and they're really cool to add to furniture, mirrors, or any decor, home decor items as well. So this is the transfer that I was telling you about. And I actually was recording and it didn't record me applying this transfer. So I'll put another link up here at the top just to show you how transfers can be applied. This one, um, like many of them, you can actually cut up into single pieces and then place them onto your surface. As you can see there on the drawers, I've already done it. So I'll put the link here, like I said, and you can watch how I applied the transfers. I'm so sorry that I did not record that. I don't know what happened. <laughs> Sometimes it just does not work out. But the transfer looks absolutely beautiful. So here I also wanted to add this tissue paper on the sides of the drawers so I brushed clear coat onto the surface, placed the tissue paper and usually I use um, my X-Acto knife to cut the paper off of the drawer but I thought or I saw another idea of where you use your sanding block and you just sand along the edges and it actually comes off much easier and I really prefer that way now. So you can see right here, um, I'm just using my sanding block and that's how easy it comes off. So from now on, I will be using this method to take off the tissue paper.
Then uh, once the tissue paper was on perfectly, I then brushed on the clear coat to seal it and then let it set and cure and it does cure quite hard and I find this uh, top coat much more durable to use and makes the tissue paper really durable as well, especially for the sides of the drawers that are being pulled in and out when using them. Okay, so I had another idea and I wanted to use this, it's called Script. It's a script stencil, but this is my first time using 3D fiber stencil paste. Oh my goodness, I want to use this for every single piece now. It is absolutely amazing. You have to try it. I All I did was I mixed a little bit of um, chalk paste or you can mix a little bit of paint with it and just to tint it, but I was using um, an antique white anyway. And so I mixed it on and used my putty knife to paste it on and that's what it looks like. It's 3D writing and you can use it with any stencil and it'll stick out a little bit and it looks awesome. Like I just thought it was the best thing ever. So I will definitely be using it again and I'll share it in more videos as well. But it's called 3D Fiber Stencil Paste and I will put that in my description as well. One of the drawers needed fixing and all it was was is the bottom was coming out of the slots and so all I did was use the glue, the wood glue and then clamp it. Now I used a glue that was a glue called no clamp so you don't have to use clamps but for some reason that drawer bottom was just not staying where I wanted and so I clamped it for a few minutes and then took the clamps off and it was perfect. And it's a really good glue, it's like a gel and it's not messy at all. So as you can see here, I am brushing a product on and it's just the clear coat again, just to seal the drawers and the transfer and the trim in between each drawer. So I only did one coat of that on top. I also sealed the entire piece as well with the clear coat. So let's take a look at what this piece looked like before. It had all of that different types of paper inside the drawers, beautifully structured and built. And here's what it looks like now. I think this piece turned out amazing. I didn't show putting the hardware back on because I wanted you to see if I had kept it or not and I did. It was perfect for this piece. I don't think any other hardware would have looked good. I didn't spray it. All I did was use Barkeeper's Friend to clean it and it worked really well and I think it turned out so beautiful. I, I Absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. Take care and please subscribe to my channel, like and comment and let me know what you think in the comments. Take care.